Razo Fomento and Famous Arm. Who are you talking to? You, you're Brazo. Brazo. Yes. Famoso. Famoso. Okay, I'm sorry. Pardon me. Famous Arm. Famous Arm. Brazo. Okay. Famoso. Famoso. Famous Arm. Famous Arm. Why is the arm so famous? When I was born, one arm wasn't as big as the other arm. But I worked hard to build that arm. Make it just as big and strong as the other arm. And now, it's my finishing move. Okay, um, how did how do you work hard to make one arm big? A lot of movement with this arm. A lot of move like weights, pulleys. I was like you it was like a pulley system that I rigged up in my house. And every day I would pull this this pulley system that I rigged up in my, and I'm pulling it, and I pulled it, and I pulled it, and every day, slowly but surely, I'd have to do it all the time to get this arm just as big as the other arm. This pulley system that I rigged up in my house, it was on top of a door, and I would just pull it, pulling it. And this arm got bigger and bigger, and now it's just as big as this arm. But now, sometimes, I have to work this arm out too. And so it's like a dual pulley system that I work out. And I'm getting these arms huge. All right. So the the costume, did you take that from He-Man, Merman character? This is a luchador mask. A luchador mask, okay. I'm a luchador. Okay, okay, okay. I've never my name. I've seen the mask. I didn't see the, never seen the wings on the head type thing. Mm. Okay. Um, when did you start wrestling? When I was a long, young, young, young child. When I was a young child. Okay, uh, was the arm... Barely out of my mother's womb. I came from a long line of wrestlers. My father wrestled. My father's father's wrestled. My father's mother wrestled. Your father's mother wrestled? Yeah. Oh, she was really good. Yeah. Did she wrestle? Was it a women's league then? Or was it... No, no, she wrestled men. Okay. Really, she was... She was tough. She was, oh boy. She would toss people all around. Her famous move was called the Flying Flauta. The Flying Flauta. Flying Flauta. Okay. What's the Flying Flauta? She'd jump off the top rope, flatten herself out. Flauta. Uh, take us back to your first match. Oh, I remember it like it was yesterday. I was, uh, I was a, uh, I was an age, and I was, I was somewhere, and uh, I was wrestling these guys, and, uh, and I don't remember who won, but it was just like it was yesterday. Was your arm at its peak, or was it like? It was not at its peak. Okay, it wasn't after yeah, that maybe. first match that I lost, I went, and I had to work on my arm, cause this arm let me down, and I didn't want that, so I had to work with my pulley system. You created the pulley system. I built this pulley system out of a strings of uh, out of levers and pulleys and weights. You ever heard of a pulley system? Yeah, I have. Did do you, did you uh, trademark the idea that I can help a lot of kids' arms that have, have short arms? As a matter of fact, between you and I, I have pulley systems coming out all over the world. They're going to implement them and put them in Planet Fitnesses. So now you're going to see a lot more people at the Planet Fitness. Pulley. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just pulley. All over. And it's a no judgment zone. So maybe you, you can't pull as much as the other person there. Maybe you're just like, Little short pulls, because you can't pull as much. But if you're like a bigger guy, bigger woman, bigger muscles, bigger arm, you, you're really pulling. You're really pulling. Do you normally wear your own face on your shirt? Uh, yes, I do. I should do that. This before you, this face, all of Okay, well, what made you choose that? 
in particular? Is it mask? It's mask. Yeah. Do you have more than one? Is that the the face all the time, or do you like switch it's it up? My face all the time. I'd go nowhere without my mask. It is who I am. Brazo Famoso. Brazo Famoso. Famous on. Famous on. I don't go anywhere without it. My mother made this for me as a child. I was very much into horror movies, monsters and such. It's your favorite horror movie. What's my favorite horror movie? Yes. Annie. D- tomorrow, Tomorrow Annie? Yes. Why Little Orphan is, Annie. That's not really a horror movie. Why it is, is a, a horror, horror movie. Why do you think it's a horror this movie? young lady, young girl has to live in an orphanage. Do you realize how kids are treated in orphanage? Horribly. Horribly. I cried through that movie. Nine kids out of a hundred have to live in orphanages. And not all of them get adopted. I know they say that Daddy Warbucks adopted her and she was in this much better place. But nine out of 15 kids, these are numbers that I'm breaking down that I've made up that I've read. Are you made up and read? By their adopters. It's a horrible movie. She's singing The Sun Will Come Out because she's hoping something better will happen. I, okay, I never even paid that no attention. Yeah. Um, okay, well, since we asked this, Annie's number one. What is, give me your top five horror movies of all time. There, there, there's Annie, there's Oliver, there's Gulliver's Travels. And then there's uh, Ernest Goes to Jail. One more. Oh, five. Um, and um, any Tyler Perry movie. What is the scariest Tyler Perry movie you seen? Anyone with Medea in it. All equally as terrifying. I have wrestled many men. Much larger than I am. I would not wrestle Medea. She grabbed me. Then I have to use the famous arm and. Victory. What league do you wrestle in? The Lucha Libre League. Okay, what do you rank? What do I rank? Yes. In wrestling? Yes. 12. 12? Yeah. Out, out of how many? 200. That's pretty good. 12 from the bottom. So you're really ranked uh, 188? 108. Is that the math? Yes. Sure. What's your win-loss record? I lost 188 times. Oh, he fought 200 times. Yes, okay. Oh, lost okay. 100. That's why I'm 12 from the bottom. I have 12 more matches to go. So you haven't won any? Is that the math? Yeah. Sure. Have you ever considered another career? I like ice cream. I make ice cream. Really? Yes. What's your favorite kind of ice cream to make? Well, my part is the getting the milk from the cows because of this famous arm. I'm good at milking the cows. I milk the cows to get the cream to make the ice cream. Then I have a friend that has a machine that freezes it and stuff like that. What would you want your legacy to be in wrestling? Famous arm. Champion for all of the unchampions. I'm an inspirational person, and I would like people to know me as that infor- inspirational character who came up from nothing, who had one arm smaller than the other, but worked tirelessly every day to get one arm to the same size as the other arm so that he could join and be a lucha libre like his father and his father's father and his father's mother. You have kids? No. I've tried. But I have to have a partner. I lost my wrestling partner. 
You were married to a wrestling partner? No, 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 no. We wrestled together. Mm-hmm. We're tag team partners. Okay, what was the tag team record then? My, oh, my tag team wrestled. We, we, we didn't get a match. He died. It's part of, I said, my, I lost my partner. I have no part. I lost my partner. We didn't wrestle because I lost my partner. He was what? torn to shreds. What? What do your parents say about your children's career and your record? Because you said they were great. My parents, they're less than thrilled, but supportive nonetheless. That's why they said I can go on to be the champion for the unchampioned. And they also say, what are you doing in there working out all day long? Stop that. What's with all that noise in there? And I'm like, it's the police system, Mom! Have you wrestled anyone famous? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like who? Uh, there's uh, Sancho. There's uh, 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 Flipping Ken. There's uh, 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 the Wombat. The Wombat? The Wombat. Womped my ass, the Wombat. Um, there's uh, the Chupacabra. Uh, the, translate, that's the Goat Sucker. Uh, uh, I, I fought uh, El Dusto, very dirty. Um, um, let's see. I remember some of these matches like they were yesterday. Uh, there was uh, that one guy, and then uh, there, were, there were these two. There were these two guys that I, I fought in an alley outside of a bar. Uh, one of us was drunk and uh, bumped into the other and said something they shouldn't have said and. Uh, Lost that fight. Uh, I was going to ask you, do you have any, like, street, you know, you ever get into a physical oh, the street? Oh, that's, that's part of being a luchador. I mean, I walk around with this mask whenever I'm not in the house. It's like a Mandalorian. This is the way. I don't take it off anywhere in public. And so it kind of opens me up for ridicule from high school age kids and stuff like that and and they're like oh look at you oh, you're you're in your pulley system and i'm like hey nobody makes fun of the pulley system i don't care how old you are so your record is 88 in well, oh and 88 in the ring but out the ring what is it you know it's 188 188 fights on the street as well no, no, I didn't lose 188 fights on the street. Okay, I mean, I haven't, think- I haven't count all the. I mean, I consider you looking at me wrong on the street as a fight, and I look away, and then that's a loss. Brazo, yes, well, you have the opportunity. Well, you have any up- upcoming fights? First of all, I do. Who are you fighting? I am fighting Le Tigre. Le Tigre, yes, in a cat fight. Cat fight. What's the rules for the cat fight? Um, you can only fight like this, and you're also allowed to use your feet. And there's a lot of hissing. I think I can win this one. Let's just hope. How would you do against other fighters, like uh, like a dream match? Say if you had to fight Mike Tyson. Oh, I dream of getting in the ring with Tyson. Even if it's just to like mop up his sweat or something like that. But I think, I think I could take him. If I was able to get behind him and get the famous arm around him, give him the move. That arm around him. And then it's to hear that voice. It sounds like a balloon with a hole in it and you stretch it and it's slowly going out. And I go like, oh, and I squeeze tighter and it gets louder and higher pitch. And then I'd squeeze even tighter so only dogs could hear it. <laughs> then I slowly lay him down on the ground and say, Mr. Tyson, it's been a pleasure. Give me someone that you would consider a dream match for you. Oh, um, Andy Circus. Andy Serkis. Who's Andy Serkis? Uh, he plays Gollum in those Lord of the Rings movies. Uh, he's he's played many uh, oh, okay. uh, like crazy character. He's like famous for that. I can't even think of all the the, the different things that he's been in. Uh, he's he's been in Andor. 
Uh, he was in a Black Panther, the the first one. Um, uh, he played Claw, I do believe. Was oh, okay, okay, that. okay. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I'd, I'd I'd love to fight him. How would you um? How would you fight Dwayne the Rock Johnson? Oh, oh, I mean, <laughs> in Hollywood, in public, so I could get a good lawsuit out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any? Do you have anything? This you want? amuse you? I I am. Um, you find this funny? I am. Um, well, maybe you want to have a shot at Brazo Framoso. No, <laughs> no, man. Put your coat, your shirt back over. I'm not allowed to be in front of the camera. I'll see you outside. Kick your ass. Um, what is the um? What would you like to say to the kids? You think you want to say to the kids? What, what you want your legacy to be in the end? Kids, Brazo Formoso here, champion. Of all the unchampions, never let anyone look down upon you for what you have not accomplished. Because someday you're gonna be what you know you can be inside your head a champion. Keep working out daily, even when your parents don't understand what you're doing in your room working out. Even when people on the street are like, you can't be working out like that out here. Go forth and become something special. Find what makes you you. And you, you, and you right there in the back, you. And yes, you. And what makes you, you, and I see you. What makes you, you? Hi, you. What makes you, you? And of course, you. Now, <laughs> don't look behind you, yes. You, me. DJ Kirkland, you know, cousin of TK Kirkland, T to the motherfucking K. Oh, That's my right. cousin, man. Yeah. Uh, what does the DJ stand for? You uh, actually DJ or? No, they don't DJ at all. You know, like disc jockey and stuff. Like, no, that's not what I do. Um, DJ, my name means um, Dick Jabber. I mean, Dick Jabber, Jabber in the vagina. Dick, Dick Jabba, that's what DJ stands for. So what, you like a gigolo or something, or? Something like that. If you act those bitches, yeah, I'm a gigolo. <laughs> uh, why do you gigolo? Because <laughs> they always say, do what you love and love what you do. So I love being with these women that got the pussy and I love being inside the pussy, so why not be a guy who's inside the pussy? And I love money, so pussy and money is what I enjoy the most. How long you been doing being a gigolo? Man, eight years old was the genesis of my life. I was like, hey, we about to start. So, you know, I've been with a lot of motherfuckers. I've been with like, like teachers and, you know, librarians. You know, I ain't thing to get those books out. You know, I was doing my thing and I had like some, you know, some of my friends, mothers and aunties. So I just kept it going, you know. And um, I tried to change it up because, you know, it feels like you, you're letting your parents down when they say, oh, what you do? I ain't mom, I don't know how you getting this pussy. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, yo, you know what? I'm gonna try to go on a straight and narrow. So I try to do what my cousin TK did. You know, I tried to stand up, tried it for a minute, and you know what? I was hilarious. I, I was I was actually hilarious. I guess it runs in the family, but to be honest with you, it just didn't fill me up. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, you gotta do what you love and love what you do. So I'm like, I ain't really love that. You know, I thought I was cool. I got a standing ovation and everything, you know. Got me some groupie sex after the show. I'm like, you know what? I can do that without the jokes. You know what I mean? I can go get the girls without the jokes. So, you know, that's what I did. I said, this is the limit. Let's take it back. Um, where are you from? I'm from everywhere, man. I'm from the United States of America. Why you need to know where I'm from, you know? Just to get a little background to you know the audience of, of the show. 
I'm from all over, man. I don't really tell people where I'm from exactly. You know, if I tell you that, then you're going to start trying to research me. As long as I seem like some person that's everywhere, you're going to be like, damn, I don't even want to check. So don't check on me. I'm telling you information about me, so why should I even tell you where I'm from? Who are some of the women that you had that sex with? Oh, man, I can't really disclose that. You know, that's not even really none of your business right now. But to be honest with you, you know, they know who they are. You know what I mean? Like, you know, there's some dudes, you know, wives and ex-wives. Any dude that got an ex-wife, I had sex with her. You know what I mean? Like, that's why they broke up, because I was there. You know what I mean? So, you just go down the line. You go with Burt Reynolds, had a whole lot of women. You know, Burt Reynolds back in the day. And Burt Reynolds, you know what I'm saying? The Smokey and the Bandit dude. I was with some of his old women. He had a lot, you know. <laughs> Jackie Gleason's daughter. Like, really, I was with all of them, you know. Anybody that got a divorce, I'm the reason for their divorce. Any rappers, wives, girlfriends? <sighs> Like I say, anybody that got divorced or broke up with a girl in particular. So I'm not going to even call out no names, you know. But, you know, I'll play some songs for y'all later. And, you know, some of that shit was dedicated to me. Yeah, there was a rumor that you were sleeping around and you end up sleeping with Drake's first girlfriend, which is the reason why that he raps the way he does today. Um, is there any truth to that? And be honest with you, it was, it was, it's, it, it's true, it's true, you know, but, you know, he shouldn't even be mad at me, you know, he's selling millions and millions of records, and that girl was a hoe, so I'm like, yo, she was for the streets, as they say, you know, so, well, he's not mad at me, he can't be mad at me, man, I helped your career, matter of fact, I'm mad at you, where's my money, nigga, you know what I'm saying, where's that money at, that you owe me, really? She didn't have some good pussy, though, she had some good pussy, man. Okay, so um, when was the last time you talked to your cousin TK? I don't know. I don't remember when the last time I talked to him. You know, he's famous. Shit, he, he got that special. I seen him on the special, the Who Raised You Special. I thought that was classic. That's top ten because that's, that's family, you know. But I, I don't, we probably talked about a few months ago or whatever you want to say. I can't pinpoint the date, but we talked then. And it was pretty cool, you know. You know, it's like a running joke with your, with your cousin of how he's always at every event possible the last 40, 50 years. So That's right. About politics, sporting right. events, like he knows every celebrity. He does know everybody. Why, why, would, why would he lie to you? You know what I'm saying? He's one of the most straightforward guys in the game. He's the most underrated comedian of all time. Like, why not? If he's not there, I'm there. You know what I mean? He's there. If he's not there, I'm there. So somebody with Kirkland going to be in the building. Were there any events that you were there that he wasn't there? Yeah, it was that day, um, what was that day, um, Kobe's last game. He's like, I can't make it. I was there for Kobe's last game. You know what I'm saying? You won't see me in the back of Snoop Dogg. I'm in row 17, and I was right there with Kobe's last game. I was at the VMAs a couple of years ago when um, um, Beyonce pronounced that she was pregnant. I was right there, right behind Jay and Lady Gaga. You know what I mean? I was there. Where else? We name some more places. Well, he wasn't there. I was there. What about Motown 25? Motown 25. I was a youngster, but I was there. I was there when Michael Jackson did the moonwalk. Why? Why not? You know? Do you ever see yourself stop being a gigolo? Man, this is a lifetime, man. What kind of job I'm gonna get now to have the benefits of this? You know what I mean? I got money. I got clothes. I don't even. I don't even sport my money. I like being like the like Bill Gates. He dressed bummy than a motherfucker. Look at me. This ain't. This ain't classy. This is never represent on how much money I got, man. But you know what though? I got cash, I got houses, and I got women that's ready to get out anytime I want to, and they pay for whatever. So I'm like, hey, where you gonna find a job like that? McDonald's, In and Out Burger in California. They got the benefits. I thought about that because they got the benefits with their stuff. But I'm like, nah, I'm going to stay a gigolo. You know what I'm saying? This thing, when it was slow, pandemic sex is, is bombed out. I'm not even mad at this. I got to stick with this profession. It's been about 25, 25 years doing this, man. Come on, man. Why not? So speaking of the pandemic, has the pandemic affected your business? No, man. It's increased the business, man. You know, like, hey, they're like, ah, right, we don't want a lot of people around. I just call you. So I'm like, okay. So I just go see people individually. As long as I ain't see people in groups, we strain. 
We straight in groups. There ain't, no, there ain't no groups. Probably one or two women at a time. Some lonely dentist chicks and shit. Like dentist bitches. You know, so I'm with that. The dentist bitches. The dentist and doctor bitches. You know, they got money. And they pay for everything, man. So why would I... Come on, man. Why would I even work, man? Any words to anyone out there who's looking to get in this business? Hey, know what you're doing out there. You know what I'm saying? Don't waste your time. Why? You know what I'm saying? If you just out here trying to perpetrate and, and like, yo, I'm, a, I'm just a gigolo, just say you're a gigolo. That's wrong. You got to get ready to be used, man. And you got to be able to use people because that's what it's about. It's about using people for what they give you. And that's America right there. That's all we doing. Everybody just using each other. So why not use it and get some pussy on the way? All right, that's a wrap. Thanks for having me. I like your spot. And you had a bicycle back here. You trying to be informed, get in shape for the women. That's pretty good. Like, but that other show, what's that show with that other guy that got going? But he, cousin was on there a lot. That um, Vlad TV. He got the drones back there. I don't understand that. Like, I understand I'm in your apartment. You got a bike and you want to be in shape. But he got drones back there. Why you got drones? Like, is Sheila E coming and, and going to do a solo between the, the interview or something? She going to do Glamour's Life or Love Bazaar? I don't know. Like, why you got the drums back there if you watching this? Like, please tell me what the drums are for. Dante Harris, welcome to Ray TV. Hi, thank you, thank you. Now, Dante, um, what, what you pointing at? I'm pointing at this picture of Barack Hussein Obama. You insisted on putting the picture in there, so I wonder uh, why. I insisted on Mitch McConnell, but they oh. sold out at Michael's. Oh, I'm sorry. So, okay. So, what's wrong with Obama? Well, I don't want to be the first to say but he doesn't look out for people like us. Obama don't like black people. Whoa, you said it, buddy. Okay, please let us know why you say that. Why I think Obama doesn't get down with the brown? Yes. Well, first of all, what college did he go to? Hawaii isn't even a real state. Pluto isn't even a planet anymore. These are the things and the facts that are there and prevalent in today's modern era. And people like Barack Hussein Obama, who might not have a birth certificate, is just here, just saying whatever he wants all willy-nilly. Well, I'll tell you what, Big Willie style, I'm not here for it. Nil. Okay, <laughs> okay, uh, all right, I see where you stand. Okay, let, first of all, people want to know who you are, let them know who you are, your name, Dante Harris. What do you do? I'm LaDante Harris, and I'm the head of the Neighborhood Watch in my local community. Uh, where is this community? I, I would tell you, it's one of the wards here in Chicago. <laughs> That's a little Wayne joke. Okay. <laughs> All right. So what is your position? In... Oh, I'm the chairperson. Oh, yeah. chairman, but, you know, chairperson yes. is what they're calling it now. Okay. Well, what made you go into this type of work? Uh, well, I was told that snitches get stitches. And I feel that with my healthcare situation, it's best if that I have a whole background and a community to have my back. You know, like a, like a GoFundMe, but with the neighbors. Okay. Um... What's the day to day like? So I, I wake up in the morning, I have my coffee white, and uh, that's, that's when you have a lot of cream, a little coffee. You know, if, it's, if it looks like Michael Jackson, send it back. If it looks like Paula Abdul, have another. That's when I'm a cool cat. Um, yeah, I have my cup of joe. I look in the paper to make sure there's no criminal activities looming in the neighborhood, because that's normally when I'll patrol out. I'll have Kuhn to go examine and walk the block with me so I feel safe and secure. And then, you know, I'll start digging through trash cans and start to pester the neighbors. Well, that's their word, not mine. I ask them questions about any upcoming things I should know about and, you know, and send them to my local alderman. And then I go back home and I do it again the next day after a nice warm lavender milk bath. How's it been growing? Has it been growing any... Oh, no, it's just me. It's just you. Okay, I'm thinking you had like at least like five people <laughs> in your back. It's just you. Because you're a one-man gang. Yeah, well, not a gang. We don't want the cops to get here. <laughs> <laughs> you're one gang watch. Okay. <laughs> well, I do want the cops here to feel okay. a little safer, but, you know. But it's it's right now, it's just me, my dog, Kunta, and then my cat. Your dog's name what? Kunta. Okay. And your cats are named what? One and two. That way I don't get them confused. One is a uh, orange tabby, and the other one is a uh, black and white Maine Coon. 
All right. Um, you know what I love most about those coons is that they're so cute and they're so cuddly and they get really into your personal space and it's like, get out of here, you little, you little monster. And they're like, meow, no. Oh, love me a good coon. Your cats are your favorite coons. Well, raccoons are my favorite coons. They're little bandits. All right. If a coon's not stealing, it's not doing its job. What was the probably, what was the hardest day at work for you? Oh, man. Um, Fourth of July weekend. I think it was, uh, I heard some, this is how we do it. It's Friday night. And our hands are in the air and we're feeling all right. You know, got a little 40 in a double cup, something like that. I've heard the song before, yes. And, uh, well, I wasn't familiar. Oh. And I'm more of a, you know, Hall and Oates kind of guy. But, you know, we can cross that road later. And for whatever reason, they just started clapping, shucking, and jiving. And I said, hey, look here, friends. You and your chitlins need to take that down the street to the south side. We don't do that here in Rogers Park. Not at all. Nunca me. That's how they say it. You called them chitlins. Was that racist? Oh, no, they were grilling chitlins in a public park. Oh, okay. I thought you was preferring people as chitlins. Oh, I would never desecrate pigs like that. Okay. Do you have a plan on getting... You think I would be so cruel to animals? I have a main coon. I have a dog named Kunta. I grew up on the farm. I hold animals at night. Animals are our true neighbors. They were the first ones here. They taught me how to uncolonize myself and my way of thinking. Don't ever disrespect animals again. What animal in particular taught you Probably my betta fish and uh, my mom's horse. We called it Blackie. Yeah. Well, there was there was a day I was locked out of the community office building. That was fun. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Heavens, they changed the locks on me. Can you believe it? Really? Yeah. Worst prank ever. They said, "Hey, you don't even live here," and I said, "I, buddy." I don't have to live here to use this office building. It's community. UNITY, Queen Latifah, 1994. Yes. Did you know that she was queen of the Nile before she changed her name to Latifah? Oh, uh, that's incorrect. <laughs> Read a book there, pal. She was queen of the Nile of Harlem, New York. And that was before the She's Cubans from New book. Jersey. And you say you were in Rogers Park. You didn't want to disclaim that. At first. I did it at first, and now I. Now we know we get stuff out on Ray TV. Um, <laughs> what, what made you look at Rogers Park like this place needs me? Well, it's right on the cusp of Evanston, where I feel really safe and secure. You know, I have a great property out there, and in Rogers Park, it's so far away from Chicago, but at the same time, it's right there next to Howard Street. So they need my assistance. They need my help because the red line is always dying for some kind of assistance. What's the furthest south of Chicago you've been? Probably Lawrence Avenue. That's literally like three miles away from. To each their own, buddy. Have you ever been to the south side of Chicago? I mean, I've, I've seen this. I've seen the Sox play. From my couch. That's background noise while I'm working on my novels. <laughs> Would you ever, uh, you know, journey off to the South Side? Oh, Just... heavens no. For what? So I could pop a cap in my ass? Oak Park, maybe. Oak Park is but west. Not, but not Harlem. Because I think Joel Santana said, tell him that I sent you. And I don't want him to know that I'm there. That's Harlem, New York. Same Harlem, different space. Just because, do you think every Martin Luther King drive is safe and secure? No. 
the ones in Oakland, California, and the ones in Chicago, Illinois, are just as violent as Rosa Parks Avenues in Alabama and Nebraska's. If it's named after a prominent black figure, chances are it's a dangerous area, dangerous street, and the credit score is devalued and debunked. So don't talk to me about dangerous areas and populace. I take my census and my vitamins. Okay. Uh, were you born were your only child? Do um, you have any siblings? Um, I, was, I was born young. I was a, a late premature baby, and... Uh, I was adopted. Oh, wow. I, don't, I don't know the lineage of my parents or if I might have a 43 and you situation. Okay. Um, your parents that adopted you, are they, are they African-American, are they uh, Caucasian, oh. <laughs> Asian? Oh, they're Americans. But what nationality are they? Uh, the nationality of the human race. The same if, if they're signing an application and they check your your race or on what do they check other? First of all, other doesn't exist. Okay, there's there's black, Puerto Rican, Asian, and white. Okay, so do they check any of those boxes? For me, they check all the boxes because America is a melting pot. But for the according to the United States government. They check white. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I I click native. You're Indian? Oh, heavens no, but I'm from here. I'm from the native land. The earth is my mother and the sky is my father. Okay. Let's go back to school. Well, how were you in school? Were you, Why the, would I go back to what, school? What kind of student were you back in the day? Oh, I was the best student in my class. Yeah, my teacher said, there's no other students like you. And I said, thanks, Mom. I did a lot of homeschool. Oh, okay, a lot of homeschool. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, was about to say, I was about to ask you, were you ever bullied? Because I can kind of see that you being bullied <laughs> in school. Heavens no. There weren't even enough kids to be bullied at school. It was just me. How was graduation when we just did? How many years did it take you to do homeschool? Was it like straight oh, up? Oh, I did K through 12 in like four years. I was on an advancement program track. So you like nine when you graduated and everything? Well, nine was when I learned how to walk. And I was 12 years old when I enrolled in college, University of Phoenix. <laughs> how long did it take for you to graduate University of Phoenix? Um... Unsure. My mother did all of my assignments and works for me. And so I have the degree in my name, but, you know, she did the labors okay. and the gains. Uh, are you are you married, single? What, what are you? Uh, I'm single and available, hoping that Netflix uh, uh, has me on one of their shows. Maybe Love is Blind. I, I'm a fan of that one. Oh, okay. Have you ever tried any dating apps? You have any adventures uh, of dating apps? I've tried White Flight. That was pretty cool. Any success? Uh, so far, no. They didn't like my profile picture. And so I did it without my glasses. So I'm really trying my best to be more open-minded with these open source apps. The term Karen. How do you feel about that? Because you consider yourself a black Karen. Well, I... It seems like you're taking... You, you, it's in, you love it. Well, I, I take the Karen hood to heart. Yeah. Take it to heart. I feel like the... The term has lost meaning since the pandemic has begun, since a lot of them have um, overpopulated, oversaturated the term and the meaning from malls to flea markets to cookouts. I, I think now we need to take that hard R and soften it a little bit to Karen's. That might be the ticket. You know, something that helps us keep that structure strong within us. It's like a it's like our Bible. It's our guiding light. And if we don't have us, if we don't have our communities, then who's going to be our Harriet Tubman? It has to be me. It has to be me. Choo choo. Do Karens get a bad rep? Every day. Do you know what it's like to walk? To a, to your local Jewel Osco, 
even your Tony's Farm and Fleet, your Blair's, the Shoe Barn, DSW. Everyone gives me the side eye. Everyone looks at me with pain and anguish, just waiting for me to reach for my phone or to escalate a situation. Every day of my life. Do you know how that feels to walk into your local store and everyone's just watching you, looking for something to pop off, as they say? I feel like I am experiencing the Black experience. And I don't like it. Malik Shabazz would never. And I put that on Denzel Washington's glory. As a Karen, do you consider yourself a snitch? Because they're the ultimate snitches for... That's a stereotype for... It's a stereotype and it's a very derogatory term. Uh, we like the term special case. And I don't consider myself a snitch. I consider myself a leader in my community. Was Malcolm X a snitch when he decided to turn against the NOI? Was uh, Boba Fett a snitch when he got tossed into the heart of the Bantha, or I guess whatever that worm was in Star Wars, huh? Was Kylo Ren a snitch when he decided to disrespect the Sith Lords above him? What about Pookie in New Jack City? Was he a snitch? He wore a wire. What does that mean? What does it say about our culture and our society? You need, you need a link to the inside that connects to the outside. That's how you make a chain link fence. One link connects to the next. That's where the chain comes in. And you know what they say about the chain? Chain gang, gang gang, Chief Keef. Bang bang. Bang bang. Ah. Takashi 6 9 Oh, you mean Kenneth? What do you think about him being beat up in the um, uh, it's, it's LA a, Fitness? Uh, it's a shame that he has enough money still to go to LA Fitness. Planet Fitness is more his style, his speed. They have better security. If that lunk alarm went off, he wouldn't have got jumped in the restroom. But I will say uh, he was my intern for three summers. And he was a little too ambitious for my taste. Well, since that you are the, the only one in your company, when stuff gets really hectic, how do you handle it? Oh, well, I just call my friends at the local precinct. I mean, duh. Don't you have your local precinct's number on your phone? No. See, everyone knows number to 911. That's pretty right. good. Uh, well, yeah. But do you know what local station number 15's phone number is? No. 773 265. They'll answer immediately, every call. And if you use extension 112, you'll get more than peaches and cream, if you know what I mean. What do you see yourself in five years? <laughs> wow. Haven't thought about that one since five years ago. Um, I, I believe I, I see myself with uh, a lovely house, a Dalmatian dog, at least a few more coons in my possession. And, you know, I'm, I'm just hoping that, you know, maybe I can have a more greater outreach and touch more neighborhoods. I would love to view the south and west sides of Chicago and, you know, take a gander and see if I can help make them better. But you know what they say, if I can't emancipate you, then buy another vowel. Abe Lincoln taught me that one. Would you ever consider getting into politics? You know, I've considered it with uh, Paul Valles. He's, he's really cool right now running for mayor. And, um, you know that for yeah. Chicago, yeah, for Chicago. Yeah. Uh, because Lori life would have my vote. Mm. I voted for her three times and they said, your vote doesn't count because that's illegal. So I think I cost her the election. She taught me how to dress and style my hair. Close family friend. RIP Lori. RIP. Um, do you see, uh, the neighborhood watch 
getting any bigger than what it is? Uh, I hope so, but a lot of people aren't as effective at my job as I am. I like to file my paperwork. I have a color coding system. You keep the colors and the white separate. That way you don't let the notes bleed into each other. These are the things that you look for when you have a neighborhood watch. You have to stay organized. Make sure that no one else has your key. I keep my key. There's a hole in my pocket. I lost my key. If anyone finds a key, it's mine. Okay. Do you want to, um, you have anything you want to say to the youth of America yes. before we get out of here? Yes. Right here to the, yeah. the camera. Hello, youngins. LaDonta Harris here. I want to know that you can do anything you set your mind to it. You can be whatever you want to do. Just make sure that you file the proper paperwork. You talk to the right authorities. Make friends with the police. They're your friends. They want you to do well and succeed. All right? And don't use the hard R. Because retard is not a good word in today's society. Thanks a lot, Dante. I'll get you next time, man. La Dante. La Dante, I'm sorry. Dante. It's Spanish for Dante. Mr. Harris. Thank you. Ah, thank you for your time. We should get a picture of Roosevelt over here. He was a good guy. <laughs> next time. Teddy Rose. All right. Yeah. I have to be confused with Derek Rose. I know how y'all like him. He's on the south side of Chicago. Yes. Oh, I, I wouldn't know that. I, I saw his career when he transferred to other teams. Oh, that's why I told you. That's why I think you knew. Oh, okay. I visited him in the ICU. It was it was part of my Make-A-Wish. I made a wish, and they granted my wish. And I said thank you. Officer Dan Jakarski. Yeah, Dan Jakarski. Okay. Officer Dan Jakarski. Nice to... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To, no, we're good. We're good. Yeah. yeah, okay. They're not supposed to see me at all, apparently. That's the way this game goes. Welcome to Ray TV. Though. Doesn't it feel like that sometimes? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was borderline racist. But yes. Yes, it was. Uh, welcome to Ray TV. I'm so glad to be here on this uh, closed circuit community cast or whatever we're doing. Right. Uh, <laughs> so explain to people what your job is. What do you do? Oh, uh, so my name is Officer Dan Jakarski. Uh, I am an undercover police officer for uh, specifying in uh, children's parties and uh, young events, stuff like that. You know, I'm the guy at Lollapalooza pretending to, uh, you know, be ODing on Molly so that I can catch people. Uh, I go to young young parties, try to make sure that they have uh, no raw, uncut sugar-based, you know, candies there. Uh, regulation piñatas, you know, at the quinceañeras. Just trust me, if you can't roll your R's in this department, you're out on the street. That's what they say. That's what they say. Yeah. yeah what made you get into that type of work? Oh, well, I've always been a, a bit of a snitch or, a, as they called me on the playground, a little rat bitch. Um, they, I used to go over there and they said I was the second strongest kid, second strongest kid at the playground because I was this size from the time I was nine years old. Uh, true story over there. Uh, uh, second strongest uh, to Sheila Kobolowski. Yeah, that girl could deadlift a truck. I could tell you. 11 years old. I saw it. Saw it happen. Hand on the Bible. That's what real, real problem, real problem she was. Yeah. <laughs> what's what's the best and worst first of all what's the best thing about your job oh uh, the best part about the job is just uh protecting the kids just being out there constantly you know watching them observing them being close to the kids you know just 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 making sure that they're safe because you don't know what that uncut sugar can do to a kid i mean if you are a little bit of diabetic all of a sudden dead i had three dead last week a guy dressed up like kylo Brought uncut sugar to the party, all right? That was in Chinatown. Don't let me catch you over there. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, what's the worst thing about the job? The horrors, mostly. The, the who? Hor the horrors of the job, yeah, mostly. You ever seen a kid OD on sugar? It'll happen. You know what I mean? You ever seen an uncut piñata open up and all of a sudden fiberglass comes out? That'll happen. That's a true story. That'll do it. The, the horrors. Are you talking the about horrors. prostitutes? The horrors. Like, the horrors. The scary parts of the job. The okay, horror. okay, the, the horrors. The they horrors. said the horrors. Yeah, the horror. No, no, if they're going, if there's horrors at my, my job, uh, I haven't been doing my job. Let me just tell you that. That ain't no kids' party, you know, mm -hmm. unless we're talking Mexicans. 
That's what it is. Oh, wow. Okay, so um, you do kids' parties? Mostly uh, kids' parties. I'll go to a playground, pretend to be a kid, try to catch the pedophilias, you know what I mean, the pedophiles, stuff like that. Uh, as my size permits, most people observe me as a child for the most part, and then I get right up to them, boom, Officer Jakarski. Boom, Officer Jakarski. You just got Jakarski. That's what they say on the force. You know, uh, 21 Jump Street was actually named after uh, after my department. They They... I'm not saying I'm Johnny Depp. Oh, I was like, you're not like Johnny that. Depp. I'm no. just saying they based the character of Johnny Depp on me, except with better hair and uh, much more good looking and taller. Okay. Um. So, do you like disguise yourself, or do you have the mustache and glasses like you're wearing you today? You would be surprised. Uh, most people just think I'm uh, uh, just a regular kid walking around. I put I, sometimes I put a wig on, you know, especially usually a hat. In the winter, it's real easy. I put a beanie mm -hmm. on there. Uh, the mustache. Uh, this is actually just from this morning. I'm uh, I'm three quarter eighths Hungarian, so that thing comes in fast. But no, I I mostly sneak up on uh, whatever the situation is, and I'm there. All of a sudden, you never know. Lollapalooza, festivals. That's a little easier, you know. Oh, okay. Uh, what's home life like? Oh, uh, you know, I had the best home life growing up. Single mother. All right, my mother, angel of a saint. All right, Maria Teresa. She was a good woman. She used to yell at us all the time. Johnny, get your buddy Jimmy and get out of the basement. You guys are touching each other too long. Which is funny because I had nobody, no brother named Johnny. She had the schizophrenia. is real bad. Real bad. Okay. What about your dad? Uh, he was never around. Actually, the reason I got into the force, um, uh, he was a pedophile. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, I don't want people like that on the streets. You know, he wasn't in my life, but I don't want him on the streets in general, you know. At least that's what my mother always told me. Okay, I'm about to say, how did you know he was a pedophile? Uh, my mother told me, but, you know, no one ever seen him, no one ever met him. So whether that's true or not, the path has been set, and I am on it. Mm, okay. What's the, old, what, what is, what's the ultimate goal of being the kind of cop you are? Uh, just to uh, clean up the streets from, you know, illegal toys, you know, those toys filled with lead coming from China. You know what I mean? At birthday parties, presents, stuff like that. I Sometimes I'll open a kid's presents pretending to be like a dickhead kid. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll find all sorts of things in there. Switchblades, uh, fentanyl, you name it, inside of a stuffed teddy bear. Stuffed teddy bears give me nightmares to this day. What was your best collar? What was the best, um, like, you know, case that you saw? Uh, June 23rd, 2006. I'll never forget it. I was at a quinceanera, and I was pretending to dance on the floor, and I was cutting a rug. And I look over, and I see they got these uh, these packets. They look kind of like honey. They're like a spicy candy, right? I go over there, and nobody sees me. I test it out, right? 250% pure. Physically impossible for candy to be this pure, this sugar that mm. I got there over there. And uh, I go over I go over to the parents. I was like, oh, hey, how's it going? You guys, uh, where'd you guys happen to get this stuff? And the dad, he was drunk as shit, so he told me everything. And, uh, yeah, we arrested 332 people that day. 332 people? Biggest scholar in Chicago history. Mm. Let me tell you that. Did you get a, a medal for that, or how did that work? Uh, no, I got charged with uh, race crimes. I got charged with uh, just being uh, just a bad cop because I didn't have that much evidence. Mostly was like a drunk guy's, you know, confession. Mm. Still, my opinion, best scholar I ever made. Wow. Do you have, um, when you started, did you have a mentor or anything? Uh, no, because, you know, I'm like a, a trend setter, you know. I was the first guy doing it because everybody else was much bigger and more physically capable. Nobody could pretend to be a child like me. No one could lighten their voice. Nobody could, like, get into the kid's side of the pool and then get yelled at when he went to the high dive like I could, you know. I didn't even get a chest hair until I was 36. Let me tell you that. <laughs> wow. How old are you now? I'm 45. You wouldn't know it. But, uh, yeah, uh, nine years old, full ass bush, though. Uh, that was really weird. Yeah, I don't know Hungarians. Okay. And you were in a pool with kids. Did you, like, shave your whole body when you jumped in, or you just went like... No, I was, uh, you know, it, when your trunks are on, you can't tell about the ass bush, but the rest of me was uh, perfectly smooth. Yeah. Uh, leg hair, nothing. The mustache, this thing start. yeah, you shave that in the morning. You can't even tell. Let me tell you that. Oh, okay, okay. The undercover work... Uh, the long ones, you know, if I get invited to a sleepover or something like that and I think something's going on, those are the hard ones. You know, those are the hard ones because you wake up in the morning like, 
you know, these are not the noises a nine-year-old happens to make. How can someone get into the profession like you? Well, first of all, it's a lot of natural capabilities. You know, you don't see any 5'5 five, five guys in the NBA. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's just what I, that's what we like to say on the force. And uh, you just got to have a love for kids. You got to be able to get undercovers with these kids. And you just got to be able to do the work. You know, you got to be able to care. You got to be able to sniff it out. You know, what's going on over here? Is this illegal? Is that illegal? You know, are these, you know, is this playground regulation? Illegal playgrounds. Another thing that I uh, I happen to... Uh, I happen to go and stop. Oh. A few of those. Illegal playgrounds? Yeah. Not not illegal, unregulated. All right? Let's say the slide, not at a 45-degree angle, at a 90-degree angle. Most of them on the south side. They just don't care about those kids over there. Let me tell you that. Is that included in your job? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I work for the city in whole. You know, whatever they got me doing, I go over there. Because if they catch you, uh, you know, if someone's go over there measuring the uh, the slides and sniffing the swings, you know, they're, they're going to think it's a real weirdo. So they got to get a cop over there to do that. Does your job get physical? Do you have to, like, fight, put hands on somebody? You know, uh, that's part of the horrors of the job right there. The, ho- horror. the okay. horrors. Okay. Yes, okay. the horrors uh, of the job right there is, uh, you know, it's not just when they run out of donuts, but it's uh, you get these kids, you get them all hopped up on that sugar, all right? You get them hopped up on 250 percent pure Colombian. Okay, they're coming at you. Ten to fifteen nine-year-olds, those fists still hurt. Okay, everyone makes the joke. Oh, I could beat up like fifty nine-year-olds. Try it. Try it sometime. Get in the ball pit with them. All right, I dare you. I double dog dare you. Has any of the kids gotten the best of you? A couple of times. Uh, sucker punch right in the ear. Their little fist can fit right in the ear canal. I don't know if you knew that. Uh, mm. And then uh, you know they always, for some reason, punch you right in the cock hole. I don't know. They miss the nuts completely, but they'll hit you right in the cock hole every time. I don't know. Their little uppercutting fists have homing missiles. So how's the social life? Are you able to still? You know, uh, some call me a permanent bachelor. Mm -hmm. You know, I try to get out there and meet the ladies. But uh, when you do, when you when you're married to the work, like I am, when you're in there, you know, I shut down 32 Chuck E. Cheese's last year. Okay, they were selling uncut pizza. All right. Uncut. You see a little kid try to eat a whole pizza, he's going to get pizza all over his face, burn his face off. Happened twice last year. You think it's funny? It's not a joke! And that's a crime. That's a crime. Yeah, uncut pizza? Why do you think they have pizza cutters there? Huh? Why do you think there's a manager on duty all the time? There should be a kitchen manager too, but they don't. And let me tell you about that rat. That rat gives me nightmares. The horrors. I explained this to you earlier. Horrors. Yeah, because it it ain't it ain't no it ain't no normal people under there. You know what kind of a weirdo puts on a rat outfit and dances in front of kids with the animatronics going on behind him? Gets my all gears grinded up. Gets the neck bush on my fucking balls going sometimes. You know. Is that the only kid venue that you have to go? To? No, Name some other kid no, venues. No. Uh, there used to be a guy named Raffy. He used to sing stuff like the wheels on the bus go round and round. Yeah, I've heard of some. Well, he wasn't the problem. But a lot of his uh, his groupies, mm-hmm. yeah, actual pedophiles. I had, to, I had to take them down. I had to take them down right at, right at the ankle. Yeah. What was the, the last caller? Like you had to, were well, you working on something now or can you talk about it? You know, I'm uh, I'm ass bush deep in a couple of uh, different situations at the moment. But one that I can talk about, uh, you know, the... I don't know if you know this, but there are junior Trump rallies as well. There's not just regular Trump rallies. There were junior Trump rallies. No, I never heard well. of that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I caught a couple of uh, young insurrectionists over there. Insurrectionists. Uh, insurrectionists. I was like, oh, hey, guys, uh, anybody thinking about storming the Capitol? And they were like, yeah, dog, I was there on January 6th. Their little, their little Nike, their little Nike uh, Nazi stomping boots. I caught them. What did you call them? them? Oh, yeah. What was the names in you? Uh, little Nazi stomping boots that they had? No, before. What, what was the name? Oh, you? insurrectionists. What the hell is that? An insurrection. So the insurrection on January 6th is where a bunch of people went and stormed the Capitol. Okay. An insurrectionist. Again, I'm sorry. Uh, public schools. Catholic school right here. Um, Catholic Irish. And uh, so what happened is that an insurrectionist is somebody that wants to take down the government. Normally, I don't do stuff like that, all right? I'm low-collar, blue-collar. I'm out there helping the everyday Joe, all right, get his cup of coffee 
without uncut sugar getting inside of it. I'm out there every day Susan, making sure her teddy bear is not stuffed with fentanyl, okay? But every once in a while, I get called by the FBI, and they have me step up to the big leagues. And let me tell you, it'll get your ass bush in a bundle. I'll tell you that right now. The horrors. The horrors, yeah. Would you ever allow anybody to work with you? You have a partner or something? Uh, you know, if Johnny Depp ever wanted to work with me, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, but in all seriousness, it's a very lonely job. Uh, the worst one, probably the one that I can't talk about. I'm the guy that caught Epstein. Really? I'm the guy that took down Epstein. Yeah. Really? How? I dressed, I dressed in a bikini, shaved my ass bush, went out there pretending to be a, a little kid. And I was like, oh, Mr. Epstein, please, what's going on over here? And they were like, and he was like, oh, why don't you step in this room? And I was like, why don't you have a seat? Oh, I got him. Like to catch a predator? Yeah. Yeah. Normally the cuffs I use are uh, plastic so the kids don't get hurt. But these were metal. Real, 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 uh, real ones. Yeah, I got him. To catch a predator, would you do it on like a reality show? I was one of the guys that used to pretend to be a kid on there. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. I was all, and then I would change, grow the mustache out in a matter of minutes. Tackle the guy, the perp on the outside. Wow. You never, you never probably seen me because I had the SWAT gear on and I looked like a little boy running with my arms out, but I was there. They had to cut me out because it was too hilarious. Well, give me one. Give me a situation. Give me one of those times you was on. So I was on the phone. I've probably with, seen the episode and I did, didn't know. You did. I was on the phone with this guy and I was like, hey, hi. Oh, man, no. I just want just an older guy to come over here and really just, just teach me how to screw in a light bulb, you know? Do you, do you have any pizza? Oh, my God. Yeah, my dad's out of town and I just can't get this thing in. And I might be stuck in a laundry chute, too. I don't even know. And, man, let me tell you something. As soon as you turn the voice on. They come a prowling, all right, these predators. They come a prowling. So they, they get their hackles up, and they start getting after it, and it's, uh, it's a wild time. Never, uh, I personal choice, personal choice, never went after the church. Church been good to me over the years. All right, oh, whatever, I was they, whatever, they're doing, whatever they're doing, they're doing it. People are catching them. It's happening. I've been asked, Jagarski, Dan, why don't you go after them? And I'm just like, you know what? God will take care of his own, all right? I'm out here protecting the kids on the streets, all right? Nobody cares about the kids on the streets, all right? 75th, Halstead, you see anybody protecting them kids on the streets, huh? When you go over there and you buy a cotton candy off a street vendor, are you sure that's not uh, insulation a lot of times? No. You know why? Jakarski. You got Jakarski. Uh, patent pending DM. Where do you see your legacy going, man? You know, it's not that I want to be remembered, you know? I don't want uh, maybe a small statue at a playground... You know, a Jakarski playground where everything's right. You know, the slides are all 45 degrees. Uh, the seats don't have little tacks with AIDS on them. Uh, you know, something like that. Something where kids can go and feel safe, you know. 24-hour surveillance on every corner of it. Uh, three officers at all times, whether inside or around it. You know, at least a squad car parked just in case, just to deter. Yeah. You know. Um, but other than that, man, it's just about the work. Just getting other people... Let me, ask, let me tell you something. We need more child-looking cops. A lot of times people are afraid they're going to go out there. And all right, it happened to me. That's how I got on the, uh, this, this part of the force in the first place. I went out there. I was doing a regular traffic stop. I was just a leather foot, just out there beating, beating the streets, right? And uh, a man, uh, kind of like yourself, uh, you know. Black. No, oh, big guy, big guy. Big black guy. No, just a big guy. Okay. Also black. He picked me up and he shook me like he was looking for loose change. And all of my stuff came out, my lucky rabbit's foot, you know, mm. all kinds of things. And I was like, okay, Dan, maybe this part of the job isn't for you, right? Where can I not get picked up and shooken like they were looking for loose change? Children. And that's where it hit me. Wow. Also, I can do the voice. So you're the first of his kind. Uh, yeah, I'm a and only. Singer. First and only at the moment. Uh, we hired this uh, four foot eleven uh, new new lady. She's gonna be taking over for me because I'm ready for retirement. Let me tell you that right now. You can't be doing these kids' parties forever. They drain you. I'm starting to get the wrinkles on the forehead. Nobody believes a little kid needs Botox. What does uh, the first week of retirement look like for Dan? Uh, I'm gonna take an RV. And I am going to go to uh, no theme parks ever again. I hate those places. I don't want to see kids ever again. So I might just post up on a mountaintop 
with like really low barbed wire fences so they can't get in and stuff like that. Uh, it's actually made me hate children, uh, this job. You know, I want to protect them. <laughs> I got to protect them, you know, protect and serve. But uh, I uh, I hope a real low tidal wave comes one day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Last thing, you have any worries for the perks out there that's doing crime and letting them know that you're, can I, you're out there? Can I look into the camera for this yes, one? Yes, yes. Can I'm I look into the camera for this one? Let me tell you a couple, two, three things. When you're on the beat and you're thinking, oh, I'm going to sell these kids some uh, some sugar. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to do the switchblades with the combs, but they're actually going to be switchblades. Some kid's going to cut his head. You're going to get Jakarski'd. I'm not the only one. We're spreading, buddy. Okay? Thank you. Yeah, these sunglasses are corrective lenses. Okay. Thanks for coming, man. Appreciate you. Oh, I appreciate the time and uh, being led into this wonderful studio. It's very... Uh... Colorful is what it is. Yes. You're welcome. Thank you. I think. All right. TurboTax. Hey, welcome yeah. to Ray TV. Yeah, yeah. It's about time you had me in here, hey, man. man. You're waiting. You're too busy training. Dude, dude, dude. It's, 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 a, it's a grind, but you know, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> I got a little time. I got a little time. All right, all right. Yeah, they've been telling me about you. Like, I've never seen him fight. He has no clips on YouTube, but I heard you 48 and 1. Oh, no, 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 no. See, here, one thing is, I don't put clips on YouTube because, see, like, my opponents can study my movements, right? Okay. And I don't want them studying my movements because when we compete, I want them to go in there, like, blind, right? Blind, completely blind. Oh, know? okay. 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 And he's doing, yeah, yeah, 40, 48, 1. It's actually, uh, oh, 48 and, and 1. Uh, it was by decision. Yeah, so I, I I never won a match yet, but I'm I'm still hoping, you know? I'm still hoping on that. No, wait, wait. You never won a match, and you no. lost 48 times. I lost 48, but one was by decision. I won one match by decision. Yep, by decision. Uh, you had the guy, you know, food poison, then show up for the fight. You know, I'm standing in, the, standing in the cage waiting for him, waiting for him, you know? Yeah. My music blaring. The uh, crowd is cheering, uh -huh. you know, because it's going to be 49 fights. One win, right? Right, right, right. But he didn't show, so 48 and 1, baby, you know? Okay. And oh, but, you know. Was it bad crash so service? Um, crap, <laughs> bad crash service? Say, they say he got food poison, you know? Yeah. That's a, that's, he's got food poison. Yeah, you know, people come up with excuses. They don't want to fight me, you know? Mm. They don't want to fight me. So, okay. you know. Did y'all eat the same thing, or was he just sick or something? Hey, you know, he was over for dinner, you know. Oh, oh, he was at your house. Yeah, he was over at my house the night before, but hey, nobody else got sick, right? Right, 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 right. I mean, just him. How mysterious the night before our fight. <laughs> Come on, man. Crazy, you know? You well, know? Well, well, it keeps your tenacity up. Like, for you to never won really, never really won a fight before, well, what makes you keep going? Hey, man, it's that spirit, man. That spirit is all inside me, that warrior spirit, man. You know, I don't quit. You know, I, I'm out there training every day. You know, hey, look, fights, it's any given Sunday, right? You know, you show up, you're ready, you're ready. But you never know what's going to happen, you know? First fight, I came out, you know, I was moving around a little bit. Caught me slipping, knocked me out, you know? Uh -huh. So three-second fight, you know? Oh, wow. So, so I didn't even use that much cardio, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I was all good, you know? Second fight, almost same thing, you know, I guess whoever... Got that second fight with me was sitting in the crowd, you know, watching me, you know, so he probably knew what to do. Right. Man. But I started learning, you know, I started moving around, learning my skills, getting better. You know, I studied some jujitsu, you know, I was getting in that jujitsu stuff because I, I was I was always a striker, you know, because I, I grew up boxing. OK. You know, Mike, Mike Tyson used to be my idol. You know oh, what I'm wow, wow. Well, yeah. Tell me about who trained you as a kid. What, what made you get into boxing? Uh, It was a uh, 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 Tai Bo, you know, it was uh, the videotapes you put in the. VCR and, and and it was just you know it was like a workout and you you just kick you know and, yeah oh, and, Billy Blanks Billy you know? Blanks yeah, that's yeah, right yeah, that's, yeah. that's my man it's my it's uh, my dojo Billy Blanks uh you know okay so was that a Christmas gift Billy Blanks of Tybo that made you inspired you to use this as a career no you know I got it my mom's got it for me for Christmas I was a little chubby kid you know she said I need to work out a little bit you know so I started doing the videos you know started throwing the punches and all that, you know? And then, hey, I say, I, I'm getting pretty good at this. You know, I was getting fast and stuff, you know? So I said, you know what? I'm just going to get in the ring. You know? Okay. So I, I never actually trained with anybody, you know? So I just tried to climb the, the ladder, you know? I just jumped in the ring and signed my name up in this little tournament, you know? And that's why I'm like, 
So I got the record I got, you know. Who was your mentor? You never had, you said you didn't train under anyone? Well, I never trained under anyone. I had Billy Blanks. You know, okay, Billy Blanks. Yeah, 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 but it was yeah. pretty much for every housewife in the country. The yeah, time. yeah. So I, I tried to, like, I, like, one time I tried to meet him, you know. I, so I figured out where he lived. You know, and, and and I like stood outside his house and I'm like, yo, Billy, you know, yo, Billy, you know, I'm just calling him every night. You know, he would never come to the door. You know, cops came a couple of times, told me, to, you know, get out of there, you know, go home. You know, and I was like, hey, he's my mentor. You know, this guy trained me. This guy's just my trainer. And, you know, he finally came out one time. He's like, I'm like, Billy, I'm your, tra I train under you. And he's like, yeah, I don't know you. And I'm like, what do you mean you don't know me? You know, like I can show you Look, I started doing the, you know, like the, the bag a little bit, you know, I showed him a couple of moves, right. you know, and he was like, I don't know you, you know, and, and, wow. and you know, after that, I was like, you know, I don't need a mentor, yeah, right? Man. I don't need no mentor. After all those VHSs you even bought and he didn't. Right, know. you know, I mean, I only bought one and then my mom gave it to me. Oh, you know, well, but, okay, he has the right. Yeah, right. I just kept repeating it, rewind it, do it over again. It's got better, you know? Yeah. You do things, they say you do something 10,000 times, you get great at it. Uh, it's 10,000 hours. 10,000 hours? Yes. Oh. Hmm. All right. Um, oh, it should have been the first question. TurboTax. Where'd you get the name from and why? Oh, TurboTax, baby. TurboTax is in the house. You know, because I put that turbo on and I go taxing their asses, man. I tax their asses. I mean, I'd be like going left and right, you know, boom, boom, boom. You know, it's like, it's like April 15th. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like tax day, baby. I get in that ring and you hear all those people chanting my name. Turbo. Turbo. Man, I just go, I go, tax! You know, match is over. You know, I'm always like waking up in the locker room, you know, not knowing what happened, but you know, it's, it's, that's the way of the game, right? Mm. So really, you never know. Yeah, right? Uh, you never know. That's okay, the record, you haven't won a fight. Other than the decision. Yeah, under the decision. Other than the decision. Right. But have you ever won a fight on the street? Oh, on the street. Uh no, I can't say that I have. No. Can't say that I have, you know. I try, you know, but I don't know. Billy Blanks is uh <laughs> I don't know, he gotta change his technique up because I, I've been trying though. Cause I, I start off, I start off, we start a fight, right? Somebody yeah. tries to pick a fight with me. I say, hold on a second, I gotta warm up a little bit, right? So I start jogging around a little bit. I do a little jumping jacks, mm. do some, get on the floor, some mountain climbers, air squats, you know, try to get warmed up a little bit. And I start throwing my combinations one, two. I start doing a little bit of airbag stuff, you know, a little airbag stuff, you know. And then it's time to fight, you know. By that time, I'm a little tired, man. These guys are fresh. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, but hey, I do what I do, you know what I'm saying? Okay. You're not very good at fighting. Why? Must you continue? This is something I need to know because I thought you were forty nine and oh. Oh no no I, I don't know my see my dad left when I was a, when I was a kid you know he left deadbeat dad you know he was mm -hmm. deadbeat dad and and, and 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 I said to myself when I grow up I'm never gonna quit you know because he quit on my mom you know you know he left us by ourselves fend for ourselves my mom had to work five jobs okay, five jobs at the same time. All right. You know anybody who worked five jobs at the same time? Right? She was in she worked at Walgreens. Uh -huh. She was the the she stock up the stuff. She mopped the floors all the same day. All of a sudden she had five jobs. She tried to be the manager, but they was like, No, you can't do all that. You know, you can't we can't have you counting. You ain't even graduated high school, so you can't count, you know. Wow. But it's all good, you know. And so I say, Hey, look, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna quit never. So I never quit at anything, you know. I never quit. I I never see I used to hang out in high school, mm -hmm. you know, with the kids. They say, hey, you better get your get your butt back in that classroom. You know, stop hanging out with these kids, these hoodlums. You're going to end up in the wrong side of the road. Right. And I was like, I'm not a quitter. I kept hanging out with those dudes all day, you know. Okay. So I'm loyal, you know. Where are they now? Oh, they locked up. Okay. You know? Yeah, most of them locked up. Uh, uh, Pookie gets out next month, so okay. probably a little reunion, you know. Okay. Go out, stir up some ruckus in the street, you know. Okay. So all right. Go, Remember old days, you know? Maybe like hang out in front of the school or something a little yeah. bit, you know? You and know? do some Tybo on people. Yeah, 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 yeah. I might I might I might bring them in, you know, I might throw in the tape, you know. It's mm. a little it's a little uh blurry now because you know it's it's 
about I don't know like twenty years old now. You know, so yeah. so it, you know people talk about DVDs and, and, and streaming service. Man, I don't do that stuff. Man, it's I all got about all VHS. VHS all there VHS, go. man. That's yeah. all I got. Yeah, you know, nostalgia. Man, never left. Never left. I don't quit, man. I don't quit. They yeah. talking about DVDs and and, and and streaming and all that stuff. I'm like, no, 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 no. This is what it is. VHS. There you go. VHS. That's where I'm staying. You know, I got all those movies. I got everything. I got ET. ET. Yeah. Remember ET? The extraterrestrial. Oh, ET. I think it's an ET. Like, no, ET. That? Yeah, I got the A team too. The A team. I think it's an A team, not eighteen. Oh, eighteen video cassettes. No, I got more than that. I got like twenty five of them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Never mind. AT is what I said. All right. Um, give me your top five fighters of all time. Oh, top five. Uh, I gotta say, uh, Dirk McGirt. Yeah. Uh, not not old dirty bastard from Wu Tang. Okay, was well, old dirty bastard? Original Dirk McGirt. Okay. He was uh fifty and you know, oh, I mean over fifty. Okay. So, yeah. So he never won a fight either. So you know, I look up to my idols. That guy was good. I mean, he was good. He had a good style, but he never won. You know. Like me, I got 48. Hey, I'm doing it. I mean, he survived, right? Right. You know, uh, let's see. Uh, I got number four would be uh, Chuck Liddell. Chuck Liddell, yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. He yeah. went out with a bang. He got knocked out his last fight. Yeah. You know? So that's how you go out. I mean, this is do or die, baby. You know, he went in there, boom, got knocked out like a man. Did his thing. You okay. Well, number two's number three. Uh, number three, uh, I'm gonna say uh, Rampage. Rampage. Yeah. That was on the A team. Yeah, that's, that's why. That's VHS. why. That's okay. why. That's why he's my number three because he was on the A team yeah. on that new one. The though. movie. He was the movie. The, the yes. new movie. Yeah, the new movie. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I why, saw it. It was okay. You know. Why you like him so much? Uh, because he was on the A team. Okay. Yeah, okay. A team was one of my favorite VHSs. I got the whole series on VHS. You have that movie on VHS? No, I have the 18 series, oh, the original okay, okay. series. Okay, I like that. I got that all on VHS. So I wanted to see what the 18, the new thing was going to be, that new joint. I, I went to the movies. I saw it. Okay, you know? okay. All right, yeah. well, you got two more. Who Two more. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, let's see who I put up there. Uh, there's Craig Johnson. Craig, Craig Johnson. Johnson. Who's he's, that? He's, he's an unknown. He's unknown. He's up and coming. He's okay. coming. What's his record? Uh... I think he's. I think he hasn't fought yet. Yeah, he's still training. Yeah, so he's so he's he's zero and zero. Yeah, he he hasn't he hasn't lost. <laughs> right, right, right. He hasn't My won man, either, though, he ain't no. lost yet. He ain't yeah. lost yet. Yeah. Yeah. He hasn't won either, but I don't seem yeah, to bother that, you at yeah, all. Yeah, but you know, you know you, that that that's a clean record. He's starting off new, fresh. He's coming up. Y'all gonna see him. Y'all gonna see him. Okay, I'm yeah. very interested to see who's number one. Yeah, who's number one? Uh, I'm gonna have to say number one is. Uh, Oh man, uh, I got to go way back, uh, way back to when it all started. You know, when 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 UFC started, I got to go back to my man uh, uh, Gracie, man. You know, Gracie. You know? Yeah, Gracie. He was with that jujitsu stuff before everybody knew what it was. Right, right. You know, I, I didn't know what it was. You know, people, big dogs go in after him. I mean, these big uh, like Shamrock, and they go in there after him, and he just like tangle them up, strangle them, man. You know, put them to sleep. You know, what's, what's Gracie's record? Uh, I think he won like all his fights. He like lost like one. Oh, yeah. So okay. So so I, I I'm saying I'm, I'm like Gracie is 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 the yin and I'm the yang, right? Right. Okay. You know, it's like kind of opposites. You know. You know. It seems so, like you like more of the yang. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's it's all good. You know, it's all good. Okay. You know? I, I'm still making money, right? Right, right, right. I'm still making money. Are you? Yeah, yeah. I got a job at my mom's got me a job at Walgreens. Okay. Yeah, I okay. stock at night, overnight. So I'm still making money, and I still fight, right? Like, I love it. I love it, you know? I still do it, you know? When's your next event? Are you training for the next fight? Uh, yeah, I'm thinking about it. Some people, you know, putting some things out in the air. I'm trying to keep my ear to the ground, you know, when I do push-ups. Keep my ear to the ground, like, trying to see what's going on, what's going on, who's going to call me, who's going to tell me what's going on, you know? But we'll see, man. If, if, if the right offer comes around, I'll fight anybody. I'll fight anybody, man. Do you have anybody in mind that you want to fight? Uh, I was thinking about Gracie, you know? You want to fight Gracie? Yeah, he's never yeah. lost. Yeah, he, well, he, he's like 80 years old, so I think I could take him now. <laughs> yeah. Probably not with your record. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'm I'm pretty nimble. I got I got skills, you know? I got skills. Yeah. I'm. Yeah. You never know. 49 might, might be the number. He might get food poisoning. Yeah, he might get food poisoning. That's right. 
I right. heard he don't like shrimp, so I'm having him over the night before. There you go. Right there. Find out what he's allergic to and it's give it coconut to him. shrimp. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Everybody's allergic to coconut so, shrimp. Yeah. I just uh, interviewed a guy, Brasso from also famous arm. I think I had mm. thrown in. I can never get it right. I can look at it. Yeah. I can look at the words and still get it wrong. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we know him. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. He Brazo the yeah, He's yeah. a luchador or something. Yeah. yeah. Razo Fomento. And famous arm. Who are you talking to? You, you're Brazo. Brazo. Yes. Famoso. Famoso. Okay, I'm sorry. Pardon me. Famous arm. Famous arm. Brazo. Okay. Famoso. Famoso. Famous arm. Famous arm. Yeah, Did yeah. you ever fight him? Because, you know, he, he has the famous arm. He's yeah, he got that big arm. He yeah. likes to lose, too. So yeah. I wonder who will win that. That's a guy That's a guy who, who stuck to his guns, right? He just started working out one arm. You know, that's all he had. He kept working that arm out. Now, look at him. It was like a pulley system that I rigged up in my house. And then every day I would pull this this pulley system that I rigged up in my, and I'm pulling it, and I pulled it, and I pulled it, and every day, slowly but surely, I'd have to do it all the time to get this arm just as big as the other arm. This pulley system that I rigged up in my house, it was on top of a door, and I would just pull it, pulling it. And this arm got bigger and bigger, and now it's just as big as this arm. But now, sometimes, I have to work this arm out too. And so it's like a dual pulley system that I work out. And I'm getting these arms huge. Some call it self stimmy but it's a, it, it, it is what it is, right? You know? Yeah. So, uh, man, if he wants some of this, he, if he wants to get taxed, I mean, bring him in, you know? I tax that, that other arm. <laughs> I'll try to dodge that big arm, but I'll tax that other arm, <laughs> you know? You know, tell him to come in, bring it. You know, uh, he's gonna break Brazo Infamoso. <laughs> famous arm. No, he's gonna in, infamous no more, you know. Uh, gonna, after I tax that other arm, <laughs> all right. it's over, baby. All right. Uh, since you're into losing so much, who was your favorite losing franchise? My favorite losing franchise? Any sport. Any sport. Uh, it was Chicago Cubs, but they had to go out and, uh, you know, win, you know? Yeah. Almost a hundred years. They almost made a hundred years without winning. I mean, it could have been a legacy. You know what I mean? A legacy. Everybody would have known. It's like, who's the team that always loses? Chicago Cubs, right? You know, now you can't be the butt of nobody's joke anymore. You know? You, no. You, you, now you're up there with the other people. Tickets, the game tickets are going up. You know? I can't even go to the game no more, you know? Wow. Man, I'm making nine twenty five an hour at Walgreens, man. I can't, I can't afford no thirty five dollar ticket. You know, nosebleeds. Yeah, still no team. Do I have a team guilty? You just the Cubs. That was it. Oh, that's my. Oh, wait. Uh, any franchise. Any franchise. Uh, LeBron James. <laughs> that's a losing dude right there. I mean, he be switching teams. So I, I can't even like. I got to put in. You know, like it's got to be like five teams, right? Because he be jumping from team to team. Right, uh, yeah. Now he win a couple, then he lose, and then he jumps team, go to the next one. You know, I mean, win a couple, then he lose again. You don't admire, you admire that. Okay. Yeah, That's the man's got spirit. You know, I mean, who, what were you going to stay with one team and keep on winning with that same team? <laughs> I mean, anybody can do that. Just go lose with a team, then you'll be real, man. Yeah. Last question. Yeah. What would you want your legacy to be? Like, you see a bunch of fighters sitting around like, man, but I do TurboTax. What you want them to say about you? Man, I just want these guys, these young cats are coming out now. I just want them to know that, like, losing ain't as bad as it seems, right? You know? I'm 48, <laughs> you know? Oh, I'm 48, baby. I'm still here, you know? Mm -hmm. I still got a smile on my face. I still do this every day. I get in, you know, I put that BCR in, that VHS in that, you know, turn it on. And do my typo, you know. Just stay, just stay focused. Just stay focused. Don't let none of this stuff distract you out there. You know all this internet stuff and and and, and what is that TikTok stuff? You know. No, I'm, I'm, I'm saying as far as the other fighters, what you want them to say about you in particular? Oh, about you know, me? You, you like you telling them? This is like you giving them a message, right? Oh, 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 oh. oh. Want, if you're not around and and they be like, man, TurboTax, your name come up in the conversation. What you want to hear them say about you? Oh, I want them to think about the IRS. You know, everybody's scared of the IRS, right? You know, they say TurboTax. They'd be like, oh, man, he was a bad man. You know, he was he, he knew he was, a, he was way ahead of his time, right? He was way ahead of his time. So far ahead that, you know, he never won, you know. One day, 
Losing is going to be the thing. Mark my words. Losing is going to be the thing. You know, anybody can win. Yeah. Right? Anybody. Yeah. I mean, try losing. Do you go in there purposely to lose? You know, at first I didn't, you know. I didn't I didn't try to lose, you know, because I was trying to get there, you know. I'm trying to climb that ladder, you know. But, you know, you, you start you, you start doing something and you get used to it, right? Right. You know? Like, you get used to it. Like, like, if I eat with my left hand, I start getting used to eating with my left hand, right? That's your right hand. Oh, yeah. My So, <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Hey, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Huh? Hey, so, I get used to doing something. I just keep on doing it, you know. So, I got... I got used to losing. Let's go in there, and lose. <laughs> you know. Okay. It, it, it's good. It's good. I mean, it's got to be a loser, right? All right. So you want to be considered the best loser. The best loser out there. Turbo, Turbo tax. tax. Boom. April fifteenth. Losing like April fifteenth, baby. <laughs> IRS coming for your ass. That's right. You know. Uh, that's it, man. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks for being hey, on. Thanks TV. for having me, man. Thanks for having Appreciate me, man. It. Is there anything you want to say? You want to promote a fight or something? Hey, uh, uh, hey, anybody out there want to, you know, want to win a fight? Uh, anybody out there want to win a fight? Uh, call Turbo Tax up, baby. You know, I go Turbo and Tax on your ass, <laughs> baby. Call me up. You know, for real. I'm tired of working at Walgreens. Mom's getting on my nerves. <laughs> Paul Weston, welcome to welcome to Ray TV. Hi. Uh, tell people who you are and what do you do. My name is Paul Winston, and I'm the first official member of the Donald Trump Freedom Party. All right. Um, I didn't ask you to be on the show. You begged me to be here. So would you please tell me why you wanted to get a message out so much? I mean, <clears throat> begged is a strong word, but I, I, I am glad to be on the show as long as you're not going to edit everything out and, and, and make me look bad and misrepresent the truth. You're not going to do that, right? No, no, okay. no. All right. So I'm here to give people the real, because I feel like most of the black community has not really gotten to understand who Donald Trump is and what he's going to do for everybody. First of all, this trial, you guys got to know, it's all part of his plan. If you read your Bible, it will tell you that in the final days, Donald Trump is going to come. He's going to change everything. You're going to see him. Hillary Clinton is going to go to jail. Bill Clinton, jail. Chelsea Clinton and her kids, jail, all of them. He is going to save America again, same way he did in, in, in 2016. He saved America in 2016? Are we still here? Yeah. Okay, then he saved America. Don't argue simple things. If Look. If we're still here, obviously America was saved because if it hadn't been saved, we wouldn't be here. He was president in 2016. We're still here, so he saved America. He hasn't been president in almost three years. So. That's right. That's right. And you can see the decline. We're on a decline right now because Donald Trump is not in the White House. We have a robot in the White House. And if you think that Joe Biden is not a robot, then you, man, I, I, I can't even, I don't even know what to tell you. you. You mean to tell me somebody 80 years old can ride a bike? He can. He can. When's the last time you saw an 80-year-old ride a bike? You haven't. Um, He's a robot. Okay. Uh, what Other than being the first uh, member of this group, what else do you Donald do for a living? How Trump do you know? Freedom Party. Okay. Donald Trump Freedom Party. That's right. That's not hard to say. That's not hard. Why, why are you doing? This is my first time hearing it. How am I supposed to remember like that? Um, what else do you do for What else do you do to make money? How do you make money? What? How do you make money? I, what, 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 wait a minute. What's that got to do with anything? What you, why, why, why you want to know about me? I don't want to know about you. Why you want, what's the point? You asked me. I just want to know who you are on the show. Like what? what? I, I'm a concerned citizen, just like yourself. And I, I want people to know and understand the truth. I don't want to go all into where I go and, 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 and what I do. I mean, maybe sometimes I go to the post office and, you know, sometimes I might deliver mail. Maybe. I don't know. But that's not the point. The point is, point is. You need to let your listeners know that freedom is coming. America is coming back. So you work at the post office? Okay, listen, I don't know what this obsession you have with the post office is. I'm very confused right now. I was here to talk about the Donald Trump Freedom Party. Okay, when Donald Trump comes back, you're not going to have to ask about the post office. Everybody's going to know exactly where your mail is, when you're supposed to get it. There's no more of this communist uh, 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 FedEx or, 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 or UPS was really just a front for China. That's what it is. UPS is a front for China. It is. It is. How? I, 
Man, I cannot explain everything to you. You have to read for yourself. You have a Bible at home, right? Yes. Okay, read your Bible. What kind of American are you? You got to read the Bible. If you read the Bible, it will show you everything that I'm talking about right now. The Bible says there's a UPS in China? I, you know what? I can't. It's like I'm saying 2 plus 2 is 4, and you're asking me how to break down 2 plus 2 is 4. You're a grown man. You got four sticks. One, two, three, four. If you took two of them here, put two of them there, the 2 plus 2, that's 4. UPS, China, together. You know it. All you got to do is read. Okay. Okay. I, um, I didn't, you're not here to teach me math. I want to know what this message is. What is it that you're really trying to tell the world, you asked to be on the show, would you please let us know? Listen, I'm here to tell you what you should already know. The Democrats are against you. They cheated. Dominion, look at the name of the thing. Dominion is trying to have dominion over us. And then they're not, they're not even that clever about it. They could have named the company, you know, uh, Fair Count. Or it, that's what I would name it. <coughs> Excuse me. It's dry down here. You mean it to be dry? What's going on? Sorry, sorry. But I would have named it, if I had a polling company, I'd name it Fair Count or Fair Play. What are they name that? It's Dominion. That's not good, man. You should know just from jump, they meant us no good. It's going to come out. It's going to come out. And Donald Trump, watch from the courtroom, he's going to sit there, he's going to prevail, then he's going to win and come back and free America. All right. Um... So if your viewers want to be part of this movement now, they need to come to DonaldTrumpFreedomParty.com. That's DonaldTrumpFreedomParty.com. You don't have to pay any money right now. Just come there, drop us a note. We'll get back with you. I have a private server, so you don't have to worry about the government. Just... Okay. Did you um, attend the, the Capitol um, rush last year in January? What's your middle name, man? What's, what's, what's your pen number to, 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 to your bank account? Right, those are private, personal questions, aren't they? Yes. That's right. Well, I'm not asking you those. Why would you ask me that? Where was I at this time, or what time, or what Do you work for the FBI, do you? No. Mm. You, you just seem slow. like you're such you're a You're a little big slow fan. asking that question. You're, you're like a little a, slow. Like you're a little big fan of Donald Trump. I figured you were a show, too. Who isn't a fan of Donald Trump? He saved America in 2016. Can you hear me? Can you hear? Yeah. He saved America. The whole, this, outside, all the way to the end of the block, everywhere is here because of him. Not you, not me, certainly not Hillary Clinton, and not that damn robot we got in the White House. Donald Trump saved America. So yes, I'm a big fan. If you save America, I'll be a big fan of yours, but I don't think you're gonna do that. Okay, well, well, since, um, do you know anybody that attended the, the Capitol um, rush? I'm just trying to find out who was the guy that took the dump on the table on, in the Capitol. Well, are you friends with that guy? How would you? What? What? what, what I, a dump on the take. First of all, how you take a dump on something that's already sullied? I mean, the Capitol. I don't. I'm. I'm. I'm not in support of any kind of illegality or anything like that. But I just will say this: that if something's already dirty, if something's already tainted, how can you taint it more? How? How? You can't. You can't. That's like saying if, if you had to urinate, you went out into the alley that you did something bad to the alley. It's the alley. Rats live there. I okay. mean, so what? So what? So what if somebody did do that? I mean, I'm not advocating one way or the other. I'm not saying I know the person, but you know what? If that person did do that, no harm was done, no foul, just let them go. I mean, they should be left alone, I think, in my opinion. That's my opinion. As an American citizen, only because those people were there trying to stop the robot from taking over in the White House. Now, because they couldn't accomplish that, we have a robot. We have the first ever robot president. A robot president. So you don't mind people taking dumps on people's table? You twisting? You, are you a lawyer? You're a lawyer. You're no, a lawyer. No, no I'm I can not. tell. You're a lawyer. You're a lawyer. You're no. a lawyer. You twist words. You twist words. Like you twist them like knobs. You twist them. I didn't That's, twist anything you did. that. I just, you, I just, I just, I just you did. Now you just saying it like I'm. No, look, I'm for freedom and justice. That's what I'm for. That's yes, Donald J. Trump. It's okay for somebody to take a dump on somebody's table. I'm not. What the hell? I thought Barbara Walters was dead. What are you doing, man? I'm telling you what it is, and you are busy trying to twist my words around and make it mean something else. I say A B C. You say pie, apple, orange. Cut it off. Okay. All right. Where do you hope America will be November, two thousand twenty-four? Right back 
where it's supposed to be with Donald J. Trump in charge with the people at Dominion. Remember, Dominion is the name of the company. Think about that. Think about that. They don't ever need to count our votes again. Even if they, they didn't count them before, they just entered in what they wanted. It's going to come out. Donald J. Trump, back in charge. America, full steam ahead. No more robots in the White House. How do you feel about Make America Great Again? Like, it was really great in the 1940s. Um, please let me know about that. Were you around in the 40s? No. Okay, neither was I. So how the hell do you know what happened? He said Make it Great Again. So I'm thinking you know such you, you're you, such a big you're fan. Gonna, I you're going to quote know. the 40s. Were you there in the 40s? No. You can only say what you know from experience. Oh, 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 oh. You read it in the history book. Yes. You read it in the history book. The, the same people that made Dominion make the history books. You understand? It's the same thing you have to read for yourself. How, you how, much, how much time you spend on YouTube doing real research? No time. No, no time. You are, you're in the library because you've been indoctrinated by the school system. That's why Donald J. Trump's going to come back. See, the communities are going to be in charge of schools. So you can teach your kid what you want to teach your kid. And the, the government can't just get in the brain and make them think like, you. oh, the 40s were bad. How do you know? You don't know. You weren't there. We weren't there. We know we're great now. We're going to be even greater tomorrow, the day after that, and the day after Donald J. Trump is back in the White House. Great again. Part two. All right. Are you raising any kids, sir? What? Who? Mr. Winston, are you raising any kids? Because it seems like they're going by, down a bad trail. They have to follow your trail. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. How many, how many kids you got? I got three. You got three? Yeah. You got three. Well, I got six. That means I know more than you. That's right. I got more kids, so I know more. That's some good math. Okay. Have you ever met the uh, great Donald Trump before? Man, let me tell you something. If I ever did get to meet him, that would be a great day. I, 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 I took time off work when he was here in Chicago, but I, I couldn't get downtown. But, 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 but I went to Trump Tower anyway, just to, you know, how when you run the relay, you have to tag, you know, to say that you, you, you hit the, I went and I tagged Trump Tower just so I could say I was there, even though I didn't get to meet him. And the next time when I do get to see him, I can tell him that I went to his tower and I tagged it. Do you it was a game of it? No, it's not a game. I'm just saying, just symbolically, for the symbol, I, I just, you know, it's something to, like, you know, when people go to Israel and they, they go and they touch the wall, it's, it's, it's like that. What would you say to him if you ever met him? Thank you. Thank you, President Trump, for saving America. And look, he didn't have to do this. The man is rich. The man has a gold toilet. Do you have a gold toilet? I don't. No. Exactly. Do you need one? I'm just saying, he has a gold toilet. I is like it necessary that. to have a gold toilet? It might not be necessary. It might be necessary. How many, listen, how much lunch meat you got in your refrigerator? Enough. Exactly. I bet you got more than you need. Right. So just because you don't need it doesn't necessarily mean you can't have it. That's why this is America, not communist Russia, where they need out everything to you, tell you what you can and can't have. You can have a gold toilet. You can't have a gold toilet. Here's one piece of lunch meat for the whole day. No, no, no. If he wants a gold toilet, he can have a gold toilet. And I'm saying he could go back and live that great lifestyle, but he's there in the trenches. They got him going through court for us, for us, you and me. You're going to see it. You're going to see it. You don't see it right now. No. You, haven't, you haven't read. You haven't studied. You got to go on YouTube. You got to go on YouTube. Only study on YouTube? I mean, if you want the truth. Listen, on YouTube, you're getting a lot of different. Hey, look at this one. All the people who say that they're for freedom, they're not for freedom because they only want you to learn what they want you to learn. They want you to learn in their schools. They want you to learn in their libraries from their books. But when you go on YouTube and you find people that are outside the mainstream, they don't want you to listen to that. They don't want you to listen to that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What is your definition of freedom? What we do, what, freedom, being free. Being free to do what we want to do when we want to do it, as long as it's not out there perverse. You know, you can't just do, just do anything. But but you, if you're a good person, then you should have freedom. If you're not a good person, then you should become good or go to jail. And you're such a big fan of uh, Donald Trump. Are you um, in agreement with Donald um, the grab you by the grab him by the pussy comment. Man, that would, that's that that's locker room talk. Like president, like you said. <clears throat> Excuse me. Dry. But like, like you said, that's that's talk between guys. 
Let's talk between guys. He didn't know that somebody was secretly taping him while he was, let me ask you this. You ever say anything? Go to a, a bachelorette party? You ever go to a bachelorette party? You, you want somebody secretly taping you at the bachelorette party? I wouldn't. That's right. Yeah, see, think about that, Mr. Lawyer. Should YouTube replace school books? I mean, I don't want to say replace, right? But I will say, I will say that once Trump is president again, like I said before, education is it's, it's, it's going to be less about indoctrinating people into what the government wants them to believe and more about different voices, different people going out there, looking at things and, and, and learning and knowing and choosing for themselves what's true and what's not. You can choose what's true for yourself. Everybody has their own truth and you can pick your truth. You can't pick your truth in the schools right now because they're only interested in the truth that they want to teach you about the truth that they say is true. But you go online, you can pick anybody's truth and accept it as your real truth. That's freedom. Has Donald Trump done anything special for black people? What? What are you talking about? What are you talking? Did you not see I'm a I mean, he hires black people all the time. He got black people at his rallies. He even points them out to give them more exposure. Come on, man. That's that's true. You're letting the news media, you're letting the, the mainstream media mess with your mind. Okay? Donald Trump, he he loves black people. Absolutely. Yeah, I heard him say he loves the blacks. Hey, you know, I mean, what, 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 what more can you do? What more can you say? If you say, I love these people, and then people say, oh, do you love them? He just said he loves them. What do you, what? You talking, <laughs> you talking about all this anti-black. Why are you standing next to the good times Whoa, 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 whoa. First of all, who said anti-black? This is all pro-black. Donald Trump is for the black people. He wants to let all the black people that are in jail right now. Look, look Clinton didn't let them out. Clinton locked everybody up. Trump's saying, let them out. I'm standing by this poster because it is going to be a good time when Donald Trump makes America great again, part two. What is the ultimate mission for your organization? To make Donald Trump, the Donald Trump party, the central party of the United States of America, to explain to everybody, Democrats, Republicans, it's a big tent. Everybody can come in. We can all, under his leadership, and then after him, <clears throat> I'm not stupid. I know Donald Trump's not going to live forever, but luckily, he has a large, large family. So all of those Trump genes reside in his kids, his grandkids, soon to be great-grandkids. This country will be great forever. Okay. Trump party. Trump party. Uh, how will I know you think um, Donald Trump will come come out of this case unscathed? I, how do you think he's going to do it? I don't think. I know. How do you know he's going to do it? I just know. How, I just do. What's the procedure? What do you think he's going to do? Wait, 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 I, I, hey, hey, listen. I'm not one of his lawyers. And even if I were, I wouldn't be able to tell you. Attorney client privilege. You know that. Why would you even ask me something like that? If I did, no, I wouldn't be able to say. That's called what they call it. It's attorney client privilege. And you should know better than that. You're part of the media. You know better than that. No, I can't reveal their secrets if I knew them to you. I couldn't. I can't. But I know this. I know this. He's going to beat that robot. <laughs> what do you think about the, the, the Stormy Daniels scandal back in 2016? Tell you what, I don't even see why it's, why it's a scandal. Why? For what? Tell the truth. You never wanted to sleep with a porn star? I have, actually. Okay, so why don't we investigate you? I ain't What right do you have to sit here and ask people questions? Why is it your moral character? On, you know what? He did something that everybody in America wants to do. Men, women, especially teenagers, they all want to sleep with a porn star. He did it. Why don't we just praise the man for being great? Again, when he does stuff that's great, everybody wants to bring him down. You've seen the list of women? That alone should make him president. What, what are you talking to me about? So you should be president of many women you slept with? No, not me. Not me. I haven't slept with him. I'm saying him. Sorry. Like, he I mean, should be president I, I, if he had sex with a lot of women? If you, no. If you look at how those women look, come on. He's got to be come on, man. He has money. There's a lot of people with money that have not slept with Stormy Daniels and Karen McDougal. Please, come on. Get out of here. That alone, that means that you have foresight, you got passion, you got wisdom. That's that's why those women went for him, man. Not just money. They could get money on their own. Do you believe this election was fixed, the last one? 
I don't, again, you keep talking about the Leafs. It's not Santa Claus. It was fixed. That's a fact. Again, I return you to the name of the company. The name of the company, say it with me, Dominion. What, that, what, what does that mean? What do they want to do? What do you think? Somebody names something Dominion because they want to be fair and free and nice and eat? No, you name something Dominion because you want to take control. That's what they did. They took control. They took it. They took it. And they switched the votes. Just like in Venezuela. Yes, they did. All right. Um, Just like on Scandal. They did the same thing. Man. Yep. Look right in the camera and talk to the children. Let them, <laughs> tell, them, tell them what you expect the world should be. Okay. Okay. Let's for ki kids. Kids, listen to me. This is what you want to do. Go and get the art of the deal and start studying President Trump now. The more you can be like him, the better your life's going to be. I wish, I wish that I had been studying President Trump when I was your age. You want to be successful? That's what you got to do. All right, Paul Winston, that's our time. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thank you. Donald Trump. The fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Mia Cruz, welcome it's to Mia. Ray TV. Mia. Yeah, Mia. Yeah, thank you. Welcome thank to Ray you. TV. Nice to see you again. It's been a while. Yeah, forever even. Yes. The last time I saw you, I was at a concert, and I was so happy to see you. So I'm so grateful that you're here and you so that you can hear my story. Okay, well, explain to people who you are. You know, I think you can define it better than me. Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Mia Cruz, aka Mia. Um, I am the fifth member of Destiny's Child. Okay. Um, now, that's why I have you on the show, because I want to know, as a fan of Destiny's Child, they had a fifth member. When did you join and when did you leave? Let's hear all that. So, um, actually, I used to live in Houston, Texas, uh, and I immigrated from the Philippines. My cousin uh, auditioned for Uncle Matthew, because that's what I call him, Uncle Matthew. Um, oh, he, Beyonce's father. Yes, yes. Okay, okay, right, okay. Beyonce's I didn't get it right. Beyonce's father okay. um, at uh, this mall called the Galleria. And so my cousin did great, you know, just like any Filipinos, we all can sing, right? And unfortunately, my cousin got sick and had to go back to the Philippines because she ain't got no papers. So... Um, we kind of look alike, so my family decided, you know, we need to make this money and you're going to be her. Um, so I went in and everyone was there and I was so really excited to be part of this, this, this group. Um, and they were, they were very accepting of me, you know, because basically I'm the one that's going to take them international, right? Mm. Kelly. The crossover, yes. Yes, there's Kelly, there's Michelle. And the other ones that I don't want to mention, and Beyonce, and then there's Mia. All right. Mm -hmm. So what did you do to audition? Did it make you sing, dance, whatever? They do a lot of stuff. Uh, no, my cousin did it. She did it oh, for okay, me. Oh, okay, okay, okay. She did it for me, so I'm very lucky, you know? Okay. So, but I am so blessed. Thank God that there are people who invented autotune. Amen, Jesus Christ. Okay. I'm um, so grateful. <laughs> <laughs> so, you said you was the, you were the fifth member. Yes. Why no one's ever seen you? Well, the thing is, they try to hide me to the world. And it's like, you shouldn't hide me. Because I'm the reason why Beyonce, Michelle, and uh, Kelly have a career. So without me, they wouldn't have been able to get the deals that they got to press their CDs in China. Because oh. it's my cousin's cousin, once removed, who is friends with the guy that owned the, the uh, factory in China. So I said, hey, these are my crew. These are my girls. Hook us up with a deal. And that's how they press the CDs. All right. So you say your cousin did everything. Yes. But you had to go rehearse, and they had to hear you sing that day, and you had to perform. Yeah. Did, how did you do? You fake the flu or something? No, I know how to do it. Do you oh, want okay. To see me dance? Yeah. Let's okay. see what's going on. All right. I will let you in the group too. Yes, exactly. That's what everyone's like clapping, you know, because the first time I ever performed was in front of my church group. 
and the pastor said oh my god she's so amazing everyone was clapping and i was like respect because i learned that from aretha franklin that was respect okay r-e-s-p-e-c C-T. Great spelling. Yes, okay. thank you. Thank you. Thank you okay. so much. I see the, the things behind you. Do you have any significance on here? Yes. So actually, uh, because of the group, uh, I was able to uh, take over and do a lot of things. So I won this award. It's called the EGOTS. The, it's a combination of Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, Tony, and S for something else. So this is what I got. So I won the first award. And also, I wanted to venture out because, you know, I like my, my music to be worldwide, right? Mm-hmm. So this one is from uh, the Tejano Music Festival that I won. So I'm so grateful. If you don't know what Tejano music, just listen to Selena. Okay. Last but not the <laughs> least, I also won the award for the best music, uh, the single on the internet. Uh, and uh, my song is called Beep Boop Bop, Beep Boop Bop Beep. Beep Boop Bop, Beep Boop Bop Beep, Beep. And this is what I got. Oh, yeah, I heard that as an homage to Pager. Yes. Okay. Um, if you had to rank yourself amongst the, the group, as far as who was the best, one, two, four, or five, where, where did you fall in that? Number one, baby. I am number one in the world. Well, I mean, I'm really big in China, in Japan, in the Philippines, Malaysia, and I've already, uh, I'm, and I'm breaking down the barriers, you know, like in uh, Madagascar, um, I am the number one singer. Have you been to Madagascar? Never. Oh, okay. You, have you seen the cartoon Madagascar? I saw, I seen the preview. Yes, I'm the reason why they have that cartoon because I went and did a concert and all of a sudden, uh, you know, they decided to go, we were going to have a cartoon series based on Madagascar. I was like, you're welcome. All right. Okay, so you're better than Beyonce, you're saying? Yes, I'm way better than Beyonce. Uh, okay. Um, Rolling Stone had a... Uh, a, a, a list of the top 100 singers mm-hmm. of all time. Where do you fall in the 100? I would say I'm number one. You're better than Aretha, Whitney, Mariah, Sam Cooke. Yes. With all due respect to Aretha, Mariah, and Sam Cooke, R.I.P., you know, mm. um, I learned from them, actually. Like, Aretha Franklin was one of my favorite musician in the world she can sing like ha you know like she can blow her horn right so and mariah like you know that's mariah and sam cook like that that music r.i.p sam cook how many albums have you actually released I have so far. I've released two. Yes. Oh, uh, twenty years. Tw- out of twenty years, I've released two, and they keep playing and playing. You know, it never gets old. Okay, what's the the, the latest track you're working on? Before uh, you got an upcoming album coming out. Yes, I have an upcoming album. Um, it's called Reformation. Reformation. Yeah, Reformation. Refer- Reformation. Yeah. Like marijuana. Marijuana. Yeah, it's an album. Uh, well, actually, cause uh, you know. Beyonce had Renaissance, and yeah. what is after the Renaissance era is reformation. But nowadays, I want to think globally, and you know, marijuana is legal now. So reformation. Um, I also sell this. It comes with with the album. Can you do that? Yes, I. It's legal. It's legal in Illinois. It's legal in in California, and it's legal. It's going to be legal everywhere. So um, if anybody wants it. I got you. I take Venmo, Cash App, uh, PayPal, uh, but I prefer cash. So basically, you're a weed dealer. Well, I wouldn't say a weed dealer because um, I would say an upgraded version because uh, not only they get to smoke my weed, 
uh, but they actually can listen to my songs. <laughs> What's the... <laughs> What's the favorite track on your new album coming out on Reformation? Oh, Reformation. My favorite track is called Ooh Yeah. Can we hear a verse? Ooh Yeah. You're welcome. That's the song? Yes, that's the song. That's the verse. That is the song. You know, and, and I get all the inspiration from T-Pain. You know, T-Pain is like, you know, can you buy me a drink? Ooh, I want to wake the T-Pain is the bomb. Okay. Is there any features on the album? Uh, I'm not trying to collaborate. Uh, speaking of T-Pain, like I, my people contacted his people and I was like thinking, well, since he has that song, can you buy me a drink? And I'm thinking about having my own drink too. So me and T-Pain might be working on something there, right? Right. Not only you can smoke my reefer, you can also drink my drink and listen to my music. Okay. Um, what what was the what got you kicked out of the group? Um, they think that I'm not good enough. But I never let any negative things come to my head. What's wrong with them? Because I was born. I was born with this talent. You know. Mm. I, I I I I when I was a baby, I came out of the womb and I was like, who 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 who. Ooh. That's how I cried. They lost their mind. The way you dance. Yeah. They lost it. And I was like, you know, my mom was like, she's going to be a star. Um, was there any beef between you and Beyonce? Was it ever any uh, like uh, altercation you guys got into it? Well, you know, she came out with Ivy Park, you know, the outfit, the clothes. Um, and I also have my own clothing line. It's called the Ivy. It's just like. Uh, workout clothes with the IV in it. That's it. Oh, okay. Well, that was good promotion for your clothes. But have you? Did you guys ever have an altercation, like get into a fight or anything? Uh, you know, one time I saw her and her husband fighting in the elevator, and I was like, um, you know, obviously they're fighting because he saw me, and I'm like, of course, always jealous, right? And I'm like, I'm just gonna let be, let that be. Because in the world, everyone knows me. So why should I get in that argument? You know, because I, I, I saw him looking at me. And I, you know, uh, I, I looked at him. And I said, hey. And he said, hey. And then I said, oh, she gave me that look. And I said, I'm out. And then Shalon, Shalon's beat that. Be yeah, that. yeah be, okay. because she looked at me. And she was like, oh, that, that might be the girl. Okay, so you yeah. were the Forrest Gump of that. Uh, altercation in the elevator. Yeah, like they were talking about what, what um, the Beyonce talking about the girl with that good hair. Her name was Becky. Becky with the good hair. That's what they called me. Becky with the good hair. I'm like, uh, no boo, this is 100% real hair. Real hair. But your name is Maya. Mia. Mia, yeah. Yes, Mia. Well, my middle name is Becky, so Mia Becky Cruz. Oh, so you're the Becky. I'm the Becky. So they, all these white women are getting beat up by Beehive uh, fans because and, and you're actually um, Filipino. Yes, I'm Filipino. And you know what? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, just want to let you know, I also do sell my hair. It's Filipino hair. I got that 27 lace front. I got you, you know, it's all real hair. You done plugging? Yeah, I mean, just about, you know, I'm a businesswoman. Okay. And if people um, want to buy my hair that I grow from my own head, smoke my reefer, drink my drink, drank my drink, uh, I'm okay with that. Because that's what being a strong woman in this world, that's what we have to do. We have to just go for it and no negativity that will come after me because I make my own money. How many businesses do you have? Um, I couldn't tell you. It's too many. Like, uh, so far, I have the hair, the reefer, the drink, and I'm also um, collaborating with possibly with Shaq, you know, and uh, Charles Barkley, because Charles and I were besties, and um, donuts. Donuts are the thing. Oh, Krispy Kreme, Dunkin', what kind of donuts? No, 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 no. This is the donut hole. 
No one ever thought about the hole of the donut, right? There's the donut and there's the hole. What happens when the hole is left out? You got to put it back and make some money and infuse it with CBD. CBD? What's CBD? Uh, CBD is something that makes you sleepy. Oh, So if you have sleep problems, you don't need any drugs. Just eat my donut hole. Is that the slogan? Yeah, eat my donut hole. And then Charles going to be like, eat my donut hole. Right. Okay. Um, have you ever dated any celebrity? You just mentioned Charles Barkley and Shaq. Have you ever dated any celebrity? Well, I've dated a few, but I'm not going to name names, you know. I'm not going to name names. Come on, give us one. Ugh, I'm not going to say that I dated this... Uh, MMA fighter, you know, I'm not gonna say that, that uh, he won many without winning, which is great. Uh, tax. Turbo tax? God, you knew it! All this time you knew Turbo Tax and I we were dating. Yes. Turbo and I we were dating. Gosh. Miss that guy. Yeah, they've been telling me about you. Like, I've never seen him fight. He has no clips on YouTube, but I heard you 48 and 1. Oh, no, 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 no. See, here, one thing is, I don't put clips on YouTube because, see, like, my opponents can study my movements, right? Okay. And I don't want them studying my movements because when we compete, I want them to go in there, like, blind, right? Blind, completely blind. Oh, know? okay, okay, and okay. And doing, yeah, yeah, 40, 48 and 1. It's actually uh, 0, 48 and, and 1 uh, was by decision. Yeah, so I... I, I never won a match yet, but I'm I'm still hoping, you know? I'm still hoping on that. Okay, this is personal. It's personal. Did he lose in the bedroom as well? Never wins. I'm always on top. I'm always the winner, but I don't let that because that's negative thinking, Mr. Ray. Ray of the Ron, Ron of the Ray. That is negative thinking. That's why women are always on top because we always be winning. Any, um... Anything you want to say to your fans, if you have any? Yeah, uh, I'd like to uh, let you guys know that I'm going to be going on tour. The first tour is going to start out in Chicago. We're going to be uh, Soldier Field, so I'm so excited. Uh, and the next tour, we're going to go to New York. We're going to go to Florida, and we're going to go to San Francisco. And I cannot wait to share you guys my passion, my singing, my reefer, my drink, and my donut hole. All of it will be my merch. So um, thank you guys. Follow me on Instagram. And um, maybe um, I'll see you guys on the street because I'm not like one of those celebrities. I actually take selfies. So feel free. Um, and I also take tips. I'm okay with that because you know what? You can't be a millionaire without starting from one penny. And that's how you become rich all right last thing your legacy what do you want people to remember you for like if they're sitting around and they're talking about your name comes up maya cruz mia mia cruz mia becky cruz mia becky cruz they like man me becky cruz was what what would you want them to say well i want them to know that i'm not just the fifth member of the destiny's child um I want them to know that I also have a big heart, that I help other people who are in need. Uh, one time I went to Jamaica and I uh, stayed in the orphanage and I fed the orphans and I was also eating the orphan food. So I just want everyone to know that I have big heart, you know, and that's my legacy, my heart and all the merch that I can sell also helps the people in need. No, when, <laughs> again, when they talking, when they're talking about you, like, what do we want them to remember you for? Like, they, your name comes up, like, yo, she was this, she was that. What do you want them to say? I want them to know that Mia Becky Cruz is a legend. Crap my mic. Oh. All right. Um, you want to dance us out of here or something? Yeah. I've, I look like you wanted to move, so yeah. Thank you for doing the show. We're, um, let's get the fuck out of here, though.